He wants to go off Strava. <laughs> What's up guys? Good morning. So, as promised from yesterday's video, we wanted to talk about Gwen's philosophy with Strava. He told me something crazy yesterday. He wants to go off Strava. Why? Yeah, uh, well, we all know uh, when you race, the number one rule is, you know, race your own race. And so on that principle, uh, I found myself in my training not really like doing my own training and being affected not only by Strava but also just by my watch and you know with kind of like expectations of like you know this is what I've been able to do in the past not especially maybe comparing uh, yourself to other um, that's not really my case for me it was maybe more comparing myself uh, you know myself to myself at, at a different point in my life and having you know expectations you know or, you know I should be improving or I should be at this able to do as well or you know whatever and also just because you know like we talked about yesterday this happened with my knee and I found myself you know last Monday going on a run starting to run try it and then realizing after one mile, uh, you know, that's not good, I, you know, I should, I, I should stop. And then I was like, you know what, I'm, you know, I, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna record that, you know, I went a mile out and stopped, it, which means that people are gonna see that and they're gonna say like, you know, you went a mile out and then maybe they're gonna ask me, they're gonna ask me, you know, what happened and I just, I was just like, kind of, I don't know, feeling weird about that. And yeah, about like uploading just a mile. And, and this is so common, it's so weird, like people, you know, wanting to run that last point two miles to make it an even yeah. nine miles and, and just for I mean, Strava. But okay, it's like, so the what? thing is like, <laughs> is there something wrong with that? Like, you know, it's kind of like if you say you have to set yourself for a plan, you know, like, oh, I got, I'm going to run three hours. You know, you don't, you are not doing it with the mileage, but let's say it's two hours and 57 minutes. Well, you might be running around for three minutes to get what you said would be three hours. Huh. And so that, that's exactly what happened with mileage. You know, I'm going to go for a 20 mile run. I do my loop. I realize I'm 19.8. When I finish, I'm going to run around the car for a point two mile to get my 20. That's gonna, kind of just a reference. And I don't know if there is anything maybe wrong. anything wrong yeah, with yeah, that. I, I think it's, it's good to say like, so there are some positive points about mm -hmm. it. But uh, the negative point, I think, is when you are not doing what you should be doing. For example, you know, you are injured and maybe, you know, I really need to get like more miles and you really need to run faster. And so that's why I decided, you know, I think I'm going to go off Strava for a while and even off GPS watch because I want to get back to um, myself, focus on myself. And if I do a tempo run, and I used to do a tempo run in the past, maybe at, you know, like six minutes per mile or or whatever. Now it's about the tempo run is about the intensity. So why don't I go out to that intensity, trying to focus on me and how I feel and how I feel that intensity, whatever the pace is. Maybe it's faster, maybe it's slower. That's my intensity, and that's how I will get. I think like. The result because what happened in the past also like talking about tempo runs and pace I would say like this is my pace for my tempo run so I'm gonna run to that pace and maybe that was a bit too hard which nothing wrong but you know it's not a race you know I'm not racing and so the point of doing like a tempo run versus a race is because the tempo run is part of a training and you can add on top of that later to your training a race it would be different. A race, you know, you give more and you would need to consider time to recover and, or maybe taper from that. So what's the point of saying I'm doing my tempo run but going hard, too hard and maybe that one would be maybe your know, almost race pace because you want to achieve that pace that in the past you have been able to achieve. No, so I want to stop that. I think in that case it wasn't positive. So I want to refocus on myself. Do I want to go running? I want to go running one hour. I go running one hour. I don't care about how many miles. I don't care about is it good enough for Strava? Is it what I've been doing in the past? Is it up to my standard so people can see that I, you know, I'm, you know, no, I don't, I don't care about that. So, so that's it. That's the reason why I'm going to go off Strava. And it's about like finding yourself and being strong in your position so that you are not affected by other and it's not Strava that's going to tell you, that's going to make you want to do more, like... Yeah, like getting even yeah. numbers, like 
it can be a, it can be a problem when you're trying to hit a higher mileage for whatever reason. And I had the same problem last year and I was trying to get 100 mile weeks and if I didn't have a GPS watch in Strava, I probably wouldn't have cared so much about being so particular with getting that number. Because what does that number really mean? It's just a number and really what matters is how you feel. You're training that day and are you having fun and are you enjoying your training and are you progressing as a runner? All of the things that might matter to you but really at the end of the day or the end of the year or your life, does that, ma does that number on Strava really matter? No. Yeah. You know it doesn't. And, and, and it, so I think you can overdo it. Like that's when you can actually push too far. And people can become very obsessive with Strava and the numbers and, and then it can be very damaging to your physical condition and your mental condition. And if you struggle with this type of like type A obsessiveness, which most runners do, it can be kind of like a slippery slope. Like Gwen said, everyone is different and at different points in your life, it's going to be a different story. Yeah. And you know, that's why we don't like road running. We don't like Hey, that's the pace. I, I keep watching my my watch. I need to do that pace for that race. Yeah, no way. You know, and that we don't we hate that. That's we why we, we that's why we run on trails. We don't care that it's a 10 minute per mile or 12 minute per mile pace because you're on the trail uh, and, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, it's not about the pace. It's and about then like you know else. you could say oh yeah but you know if you want to be serious about your training you need to have the numbers you need to be training at the pace and this is not true no. at all because. You would see like, for example, Zach Miller, you know, one of the, one of the top trail runners in the world. He has been like going out on trails and mountain runs. Like he, he's beating guys that are like so fast on the track and so fast on road running. And he doesn't even have a GPS watch. So yeah. he runs out, he, he trains out in the mountain. He doesn't have a GPS watch. He doesn't have Strava. And when, he, when people ask him about his training, you know, how many miles do you do per week? Uh, what kind of pace and he's gonna tell you, you know, I don't know like uh, I'm today I'm going out for an hour today. I'm going out for three hours and that's what he does and he's going out in the mountain He doesn't know about the pace. He's not looking at his pace and you, you, because it doesn't mean anything when you are in the mountain So no, and it really can allow you to connect more with your with your place like enjoy being on that run. We're done like with with the GPS watches. I did not run this morning and I will have to say it did feel really good because not that I'm ever like constantly looking at my watch, but it just felt really liberating to just be like I'm just fully invested in being here and experiencing this moment and feeling my body and running until I feel like stopping. And that is the true indication of when should the run be over. I had no idea how far I was going to go this morning. And I just went until I actually felt like it was enough, yeah, which is a very weird concept for like. And it's kind runners. of like, yeah, it's kind of like disconnecting from the. It's like living through your watch. Yeah. Today I'm gonna do a six mile run. The trail is, you know, if I do two out and back, it's five point eight. This is the reality, and maybe five point eight would be enough. You, you know, you do that trail. That's the reality of the moment. You are running on that trail. But then if you live through your watch, you are like. You know, you might as well go out on a treadmill because whatever, what matters is what's, what your watch is saying. Uh, so I'm going to run on my treadmill until my watch says six miles. No, this is the reality. This is where you are. You are not in your watch. We want to reconnect with our environment, with our ourselves. We don't want to be affected by what are others saying, what we show to others. It, all of that doesn't matter. We need to take a break from Strava. We need to take a break from GPS watches. So that's it. Uh, maybe you have never been checking out our Strava anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. And for those that have been checking our Strava, uh, it will be fine. See ya later. But it's actually really good timing because Gwen's watch broke a little bit ago. And check out the replacement watch I got him. <laughs> all right, guys. So that's the watch. It's super basic. That's all you need. I'm going to get one. I want, I want like a bright blue or pink or purple one though. So that's it. Gwen's feeling better, and we will see you guys tomorrow! <laughs>